Hello, Fellowship family. It is so wonderful to worship our amazing Lord with you today. I'm Jennifer, and here are some announcements. We are so grateful to the Lord for the rain that He has provided to our area in recent weeks. Now with the rain, our campus grounds are flourishing. And as a result, we are asking that you please join us this Saturday, September the 24th, from 9 a.m. to noon for Landscape Day. Let us know that you will join us by signing up in the main foyer. Good News Club, which is an outreach in our local schools, needs volunteers. Join this dynamic ministry, which is reaching our schools with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can be a part of making an eternal difference in a child's life. Sign up and learn more in our main foyer. In just a few weeks, we will celebrate our 36th church anniversary. Wow, thank you, Jesus. We have lots of things planned and invite you to mark your calendars. T-shirts to mark this joyous occasion will be available for purchase. Be on the lookout for more information. We will have special worship services on Sunday, October the 9th. We will come together and celebrate and give thanks to the Lord for His faithfulness. Please invite and bring your family. We are also excited to announce a beautifully designed and crafted commemorative coin that will be available for purchase in our main foyer. Now, this beautiful coin will serve as a reminder of God's amazing goodness and faithfulness and can be given as a gift, thereby helping to spread the word about the good things that God has done in our midst. The commemorative coins will be available for purchase on Sunday, October the 2nd. There will be a limited number of these special coins. Make plans now to get yours on October the 2nd. Please make plans to join weekly worship services at our new campus every Thursday at 7 p.m. Thank you for your attention. And now we will enter into our wonderful worship service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in person. And to our internet audience, we say welcome. Thank you so much. If you're partnered with us with TFI, we thank you for joining in the service, for we need you. We need everyone. We thank you so much. And I encourage you to just participate in the service. Those of you who are here today, stand up with us so that we could just bring all the praise and glory to the Lord, that he may be magnified. Because this is not about us, it's about him. Stephanie. Good morning. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son for us, that he came to save us and redeem us? Oh, we thank you, God, for that great love. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt your name this morning. Thank you, God. When night is falling and fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. And when my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me, yeah. And I decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. You keep repeating promises to me. Oh, yes, you do, God. And there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough. 
for me Cause I decided I'm not giving up You won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I'm feeling breaking out like the let go Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo, echo in my soul. So, there's an echo in my soul. There's an echo in my soul. That's how long I'll bring 
you praise, yeah. That's how long you're worthy. And that's how long. That's how long you're worthy, God. And that's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long you're worthy, God. And that's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long you're worthy. And that's how long I'll bring you praise. Forever and always. Forever and always. Forever and always. Forever and always.
praise team was singing songs about you that's why we can come to you because you are the answer for every situation you are the solution for every problem Lord God and you are the a healer how do I know because you heal me and it says that you are the same you were the same then you're the same today and you're the same forever. So as we pray for these people that are in need, in need of a healing, we know that Jesus is our healer. So Sandra, we pray for you in the name of Jesus. Rosalinda, we cry out for you that the Lord has control of cancer. You are a cancer healer. You can wipe it away, and you do it well, Lord God. Like I said, I'm a witness, Lord God, and I will forever, forever glorify your name and give you praise. As, a, as we were singing today, I realized, Lord, you are all we need. Angela, we cry out for healing. Brenda, recovery from a stroke. Veronica, peace and hope because that's who we are in Jesus. He is our peace, he is our hope. Lay hold of who he is. Don't get worried about your situation, but know who you are in Christ Jesus. And Shireen, we pray for you for this mass that you're having to deal with with your thyroid. I know it can be scary, I know that there can be some anxiety, but you said you could take it away, and I believe that in the name of Jesus. Morelia, this pregnancy, it's no problem for the Lord. It's a problem for the doctors, it's a problem for everyone else but you. You're able to deliver this baby as it should be, 
because you are our deliverer. And we thank you so much, Lord God. Kristen, we pray for you. We believe with you that that blood clot that you're experiencing, that the Lord can move that blood around where it's not a problem because he is our blood. He saved us through that blood. And if he can save us through that blood, he can heal us through that blood. Barbara, we are praying for you with the hip replacement. We know how this old body gets when we need some joints on doing right. But, but God can handle that and God can change that situation. We pray in the name of Jesus for a angel, for healing and restoration, for salvation and protection. Again, we come in the name of Jesus because you said you are our protector, you are our salvation, and we believe that you can do this for this family. We believe it, Lord God. Salvation and a heart of forgiveness and hearing for Mark Sr. Lord, you are a forgiver. You forgave us. That's why we're here today. And we believe in your name <clears throat> and cry out from a heart of thanksgiving that you are able to bring salvation of the heart and forgiveness for this person. And Lord, for the Dyson family, we pray for comfort on the passing of their beloved mother and mother-in-law, Virginia, from the Philippines, Lord God. Just like you move here in Corpus Christi, you can move there in the Philippines. You do it well because you're all powerful. You're all over the place, Lord God. And we thank you and cry out for comfort. So as we have brought this to your attention, Lord God, you already knew, but we believe with these people and we stand in faith that you're able to heal. We ask for faith, that these people believe in faith that you are able to heal. And we thank you for a praise report that's coming, that God, as I remember the songs that we are singing all the time, God, you're doing something somewhere all the time, all the time. Why not can we not believe for these people that you are doing something? Lord God, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. everybody how's everybody doing Good. my name is Kenneth Mutchler and I'm up here uh, to do a few things uh, the, the first of which is to uh, uh, see if we have any first-time guests if, if this is your first time here if you would please raise your hand so we can recognize you uh, we, we have a gift for you thank you sir thank you sir we have a gift for you and a card if you just fill out that information and and uh, with that information, somebody's just going to give you a call and check in on you from time to time. Anybody else? Anybody else? I don't want to miss anybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, let's just uh, stand up and greet one another for a couple of minutes.
a great place to be, isn't it? Amen. Well, as we're making our way back to our seats, uh, I do have an, uh, an announcement uh, about uh, Pastor Fields' uh, homegoing service. Um, I've actually known Pastor Fields for probably over 30 years, and what a great man of God. What a great man of God. Amen? Yes. Yes, he and his wife have been serving the kingdom for a long, long time. Amen. So, uh, but he went to be with the Lord. He received the prize of the high calling. Amen. He received the prize, y'all. So the service, his ongoing service is going to be Wednesday, the 21st. It's coming Wednesday, okay? Now there's going to be a private viewing for the family uh, from 9.30 till 10. And then the public viewing and service to follow, which will uh, start, the public viewing will be from 10 to 10.30, and the service will be at 10.30. So please, if if you can at all, be here, be here for this, because this is a man, this is a couple who have have served the Lord their entire life, and and, uh, it's just a good thing to be a part of, if, if you can be here, okay? Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, now it is time to worship in our giving. Right. It's time to worship, y'all. We, we get to continue to worship. If you need an envelope, if you please raise your hand, our ushers will see to it that you receive one. You know, we have the three ways to give. We've got the get out of debt boxes on each uh, end of the, uh, the platform here. And uh, I've just got to share with, with you that uh, God is so faithful in his provision for his people. You know, it, it, it really... What I've come to realize is it doesn't matter the size of my paycheck. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is because I've had a lot and I've had little. But the Lord has has uh, continually provided for Cindy and I through through it. It's about His providence over His people. He He takes care of His kids. Amen. So if uh, I'm going to pray and then the ushers will receive uh, the the offering, and then after the offering. We have a special guest speaker this morning. She, she's special to me. I know she's special to you, Stan. <laughs> but but, but Miss Reed is going to get up here and share, share the word with us this morning. And, and uh, she, she's, she's, more than a, she's more than a friend to me. She, she's like a sister. She really is. And, 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 and uh, we, we, lo- we love you. We love you, Rita. We love you. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you for so much for this opportunity to give. Father, thank you for blessing the gift and the giver. Lord, you are so good. You are so faithful. You're so kind. Father, and I just ask that you would uh, continue to pour out upon your people, Lord. Whether we have a little or wh- whether we have much, Father, it's all yours. So we thank you for it. I ask you to bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, praise team. Wasn't that awesome praise today? (laughs) The Lord has truly been in this place and is in this place and will continue to be in this place. Well, I bet y'all thought there for a while before Ken said anything, y'all probably thought it was Stan that was going to minister. It's me. (laughs) And like... Like the old song goes, it's me that's standing in the need of prayer this morning. (laughs) So I so appreciate you. So appreciate you. You know, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. The Lord does such a marvelous work in our lives. Before I go on, though, I'd like you all to know my sister is here today. (laughs) It brings tears to my eyes because I lost my mom at an early age, and she took over. And uh, actually, when I think about it, she took over before my mom's death. (laughs) She was always the oldest sister. But anyway, thanks, God, for coming. You know... I was talking about how God will show us something, reveal something to us. And when he does that, I always have to stop and think, how do I walk that out? What I've seen, what he's told me, how do I walk that out? How do I get into that position? And when he does that, when he reveals something to me, I'm always trying to figure that out, you know, how does that look to you, Lord? What are you expecting from me? And we'll go back a bit. On June 23rd, 2019, Brother Elliot, you spoke a word that just, it did something to me. It stirred my insides. As you was receiving the offering one day, And y'all probably visited with Brother Elliot. I have, because I like to. And when you were receiving that offering that day, you said, you ought to want to give something to the Lord. After all, he gave you his name. After all, he gave you his name. And I began to meditate on that. And I want to say that I went home that day and wrote stuff down, but probably not. Because on Sundays, I go home and I take a nap. But I (laughs) was so moved by that. So the title of my message this morning is, Jesus gave us his name. Jesus gave us his name. If you look at me, and this is a very, very familiar scripture in Second Chronicles 7.14, it says, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Where I would like for you to focus is if my people who are called by my name, because Jesus gave us his name. And when he gave us his name, he gave us himself. When he gave us his name, he gave us himself. So remember I was telling you earlier when when I see and feel something like this, I think, You know, I I want to process it. So when the Lord showed me this through Brother Elliot, I began to think, what does this mean? Why is it important? What does it bring to the believer that Jesus gave us his name? So think, come with me a little bit. Think about this. What does it mean? It means I got a brand new identity. I don't look like I used to look before salvation. I look the way Jesus wants me to look. Or at least I'm, I'm getting there. 
because he's given me a brand new identity. Look at it with me this way. My name was Rita Cameron. Okay, most of you probably don't know that, don't even probably care. But when I got married, my name changed. I had a new identity. My name is Rita Mack. And that's what, who I walk in now. My identity changed. When we come to Jesus and he gives us his name, our identity changes. Now, Paul always uses an illustration in Ephesians 5. Everybody knows it that's married, that are unmarried, you know it. But in 522, he talks about how wives and husbands should act and what should happen in that process. If you're acting like you should act, and we have to remind ourselves it's all about Jesus. But it says, you know, in 22, it just talks about husband loves your wife and, and husbands love your wives like Christ loves the church. There's just this good comparison. But in 531, it says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father, his mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Amen. You see what's happened in this? It, not just in a marriage, but in a marriage, this is what happens. You know, and if you've been married, we've been, Stan and I have been married 54 years. So that person is connected to you. Amen. He's walking with you. It doesn't always go the way we would like, but we know they're there. We know that we've got some covering. We know that we are protected because we are going to protect each other. It, it, I can talk about Stan, but I don't want anybody else talking about him <laughs> because he belongs to me and I belong to him. And that's what we see when we're looking and Jesus is saying, you know, leave your old identity and come to me. I don't think Sister Marva would mind. I didn't ask permission, but I'd like to share something. She said in a conversation, we were just having a conversation, and she made a comment, and I thought, wow. She said that, you know how we, we um, she was saying with her maiden name, she was just, she liked who she were was with that maiden name. Remember that? She liked that. She liked her name. I liked my name, Cameron. But God shared something with her and said, put that behind. I'm paraphrasing it a little bit. But walk in your new identity. Walk in your new legacy and see what I will do. And she began to experience things because we were thinking about Kingsville, you know, with the opening of the church in Kingsville and realized that's where they started. And now it's coming all the way back around, but she had to get out of that place of thinking she was her old self and she was somebody new and she needed to be walking in that. And I believe that's what the scriptures mean when it says, you know, for this reason, you know, you got to let go of your old self in order to see what I have new for you to do. Because God has infused his very life into us through Jesus Christ. He is doing what he's doing. Just like in a marriage, you are in a new place. Amen. Nothing, and what it is about our identity in Christ is nothing we can do can take away that identity. He said, that identity is yours forever, but you need to know what you have in my name. And so that brings me to the next point, is when he, Jesus gave us his name, why is it important? Because he gave us a new status. See, as a wife, when I stand in our marriage, very, very young, but we knew our place. We knew we had a new status. I couldn't continue to act in the way I was when I was single. I had to act like a married person because in my new status, I got a new position. I became a wife. 
I couldn't act the same. I mean, I couldn't just go out with my friends without some consulting between the two of us. And that's what Jesus is saying. Let's look at it. Let's look at um, Galatians 4, 7. It says, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but you're a son. And if a son, then heir of God through Christ. But let's look at the part, no longer a slave, but a son. Can you see that in Christ Jesus with that new identity, you, you gained a new status. Amen. In that new status, you gained a new position. Because you're no longer a slave. Amen. You are a son. Amen. And in that you received a new dwelling place. Amen. Just like sometimes when you get married, you get a brand new home or you get eh, maybe an a efficiency apartment with a, you know, room, a room and you know, one room, but you get something new. But in Christ Jesus, we get a new dwelling place. Amen. We get to live in his presence. And if he has not given you that name, you're not going to live in his presence. Amen. He's given you a new name. Amen. And like with the wife, you, you're on a journey together with someone. You are covered. You feel this protection. Now, I'm not just saying this. I know that sometimes it doesn't always feel that way, but it doesn't negate the fact that it's not true. Amen. You are still covered as long as you sit and believe and, and, and walk in that covering. Amen. And the same is true when Jesus said, I'm going to give you, I'm, you're no longer a slave, but you're a son. And I feel like what he's saying is, I'm not a foreigner anymore. I'm, not, I'm now a citizen of heaven. Amen. And that citizen, that heaven is right here on earth because I can live in his presence. Amen. I am living in his presence. I'm in a dwelling place that he has prepared for me. And Susan, I always think about passports, you know, when we're traveling over the world and we have to have this visa to get into a country. But when we come back home, we need a passport that says United States of America. I believe that this passport that we need as we enter his presence, this passport that we need when we are when we get into heaven, it's a passport that will stamp, Jesus gave us his name. And when Jesus gave us his name, he gave us himself. He said, you cannot just walk in here any kind of way. You got to be identified. You got to have an identity to be in my presence. Because, but I've given you that name that you can. So when I think about it, I think that, oh, my God, I have a brand new home. I have a new dwelling place because he gave us a son. And unlike a slave, I am now a son. I've taken on this whole nature of the Lord. Now, this came to my heart as I was talking. You can live in those slave quarters if you want to. But Jesus said, I have prepared a mansion for you. So you need to step out of that place and step into the mansion that I've given you. And that may put a little perspective on it. It did for me. I no longer have to dwell there. I can dwell what he's given me. And he has given me all of himself. Everything the father has given him, he has given to us. And that, that's an awesome, that's awesome. But if you don't lay hold of it, if for some reason you can't apprehend it, it keeps you in a place where you're always twisting and turning and wondering and worrying and anxiety. But he said, I got you. I gave you my name that you may know I got you. And I just thank God for that. Because when, 
like, just like I said, in a marriage, it's the same thing. You, you combine your finances. And somebody might say, well, we don't have very much. But can I share with you that if I my 100 you got a $100, $200 is going to go a lot further than 100 by itself. You know, it, it is truly, it, you, know, you don't have to have much. You just have to have, be willing to give it all to the Lord. So as my new identity and my new status, I just have to learn to walk in it in order to receive the benefit. So it says, my other question was, what does this bring? What does it bring? In order, it brings us resources and other benefits by when Jesus gives us his name, but we have to access those benefits in his name, our new name, because guess what? I'm married to Stan. Money that we have, his money, my money, it belongs to me. But <laughs> the, the thing you got to realize is this. When I go to claim that money, I better come with a, my, new, my name, Rita Mack. I can't use my old identity to claim what's mine. And that's what Jesus is saying to us today. Just like we were praying for people, he is saying, pray in my name. Come to me in my name, in my name. That name that I gave you, come to me. And that's what it's saying here. Because now listen, let's go back to, if it, I don't think I read the scripture, Galatians 4, 6 through 7. It says that, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then you are heir of, of God. Where? Through Christ. Who has given you his name? Jesus. So that's the way you have to come. You have to come like you are an heir. Like I possess something that Jesus has given me to possess, but I can't possess it unless I come in, with, in his name in his name. So we have an inheritance. And like I said, I, whatever is owned in a marriage, y'all can get that scenario because we're talking like if in fact, Karen has something, Junior's have something, Raylan has something, it's all theirs together, but they've got to come as Durrells to claim that. And that's the point that I'm, I'm talking about when I say now you are heirs through Christ Jesus is when he gave us, he gave us himself. So he, he pretty much gave us absolutely everything. He gave us everything. We, when we bear the name of Jesus, we have everything that he has, both present things, things to come, things that will just be here. And nothing should ever take us by surprise. If we, because we're going to go through trials in this life. They're going to be there no matter what we think, how we feel, trials are going to come. If you're not going through something today, keep living. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Keep living. As my, my aunt of 99 years used to say, keep saying good morning. Just keep saying good morning, waking up thinking that, you know, good morning, this is all. But Jesus has a plan. But he said we can overcome all this stuff because we have an inheritance. We have an inheritance. And that means so much. Again, you could sit there and not claim it. But he said, why? I've given it all to you that you might claim it. So my message is claim who you are. Walk in who you are. You know, just, just take a position that this is my God. This is what he has done for me. Amen. So we see that when Jesus gave us his name, he gave us a new identity. With that new identity, he gave us a new status. He put us in a better position, a much, much better position. We didn't even know that we needed to be saved. But when we did get saved, we recognized what we have. We recognized the difference. 
and I think I'm speaking to everybody that's here, unless you just woke up one morning and said, I'm going to give myself to the Lord. I think it was a divine initiative. He called you out of darkness into a light, his light. So when he called you, he gave you a new name and he gave you a brand new status. He gave you a new position. He gave you a new dwelling place. You don't have to look like you used to look. You don't have to stay in that position. You need to claim who you are in Jesus. Because you can stay in there and you can stay there not knowing who you are. But it sure works better when you know who you are in Jesus. So when he, because he gave us his name, he gave us himself, we became partakers of his divine nature. If you guys remember, I'm sure you do, Acts 3, where this lame man was always at the temple gate begging for alms. You know, everybody that passed by, give me something. And they would give him something, but I would venture to say he went home thinking, but I still can't move. You know, this money that you've given me is not really doing anything for me. I'm still feeling the same, same way. I'm, you know, I'm trying. People are taking me there. What's going on? Why am I not changing? <laughs> but one day, John, Peter and John stepped by. <laughs> one day, I don't know if it's early one morning, like the saints used to say. I don't know when it was, but one day, Peter and John went by. <laughs> And Peter said to him, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I have, I will give it to you. In the name of Jesus, <laughs> rise up <laughs> and begin to walk. What happened there? That lame man's identity changed. He was no longer the lame man. He was a walking man. <laughs> his position gave him something else in his new status. He was like, somebody else sat there. I ain't sitting there no more. His dwelling place changed. Because now he could move around. He didn't have to sit there anymore. Because the name, the name of Jesus, he got up and moved. In the name of Jesus, I declare today that you can change your position. You don't have to sit where you're sitting any longer. He's too good for it. He gave us his name. At the cross, he gave us his name. He said, you belong to me. And I'm everything you need. If you're sitting back and not absorbing this, apprehending this, let Christ do the work. Not in what I say, but let him do the work. Because he's able to do above and abundantly all that we could ask or think. That's powerful. Because I don't care if you're married 54 years, you, you love that person, but that person can't do that. Jesus said, I can. So if you're struggling in a marriage, let Christ abide. Stay in his presence. Because just like that lame man, when he changed his position, when he recognized who he was and because of that name of Jesus, it reminds me and it tells me this is who Jesus is. He's the bright and the morning star. He's Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He 
is the word of God. He is the word of God. That word that God said will not return void. What I send out to you will do the job. Just like Pastor Bird, when we talked, when you prayed and we were all praying for that rain and it came down, did it not do its purpose? Isn't everything that we own in our yard green? He didn't, he didn't just send it and say, no, I'm not going to do anything. That is the same thing that he does with his word. He said, what I send out to you is not going to return void. It's not going to, it's going to complete a purpose. So that's why I say we have given, we've been given the name of Jesus. And with that, he has given us all of himself because he said, I'm the bomb of Gilead. He said, you can rest in me. He said, you are our peace. He is our joy. He is everything. So we have been given the name of Jesus. We have been named that. And I keep saying this because it's so important. But with that name came everything. And with, with that name, I inherited everything. Now, if I choose not to walk in it, it's not going to happen. But I tell you what, if you turn your eyes towards the Lord and realize he has given me everything I need, that I say to you, you know what that means, that he is the son of the living God. I can't seem to stop here because we could go on and on about the names of God and who he is to us because that's what your inheritance has been. Thank you very much. Lord, so much for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for calling us unto yourself. We thank you, Lord, because of who you are, not because of who we are. I thank you, Lord, that we can walk in your strength. I thank you, Lord, that we can walk in your love. We can move the way you moved because we are your sons and we have inherited your divine nature and i thank you so much lord for who you are and who you are in christ jesus in jesus name i pray amen and amen Yes, you. 
That's awesome, Stephanie. Thank you, praise team. Thank you so much. You guys always know what to sing. Always know what to sing. Because they sing about Jesus. I almost forgot Stan touched me and said, you know, you have to go back up. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of amazing that, you know, you sit here and you see everybody else doing things and you think, oh, this, this is good. But when it's your turn, it's like, uh oh, <laughs> um, but Enid spoke a word to me one day and talked about, you know, as volunteers and God has shown her, you have been at this church long enough. You need to be a volunteer. You need to be doing something in the house of God. If you call this your home. Anyway, I just thought of that. But thank you so much for the songs. They, they were awesome. My heart is full. I don't even know that I've ever done this before. But I've seen it done. That if you don't know this Jesus that we were just talking about, if you don't feel like you have that name of Jesus, this would be a good time if you're willing to raise your hand, to come to Brother Elliot, to Pastor Bert, and give your heart to Jesus so that Jesus might give you his name. Because he said, the only way you can get this name is that you have to come to me. You have to confess who I am in order to do that. And you have to believe in your heart that I am the son of God. I am God's son. So if that's you today, and if you would like to do that, this would be a good time to give your heart to the Lord. So we'll wait a few minutes. So if there's anyone, if you'd raise your hand or just step to the front, you can do that in Jesus' name. Is there anybody that's feeling that need today? Amen, amen. amen. Well, <laughs> We're probably a little bit early, <laughs> but I think we've done it all. <laughs> I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Whatever it is, don't y'all tell Pastor Don. <laughs> he may not ask me back up here again, uh, but it's been a good day, and I so appreciate y'all. We have an elder that wants to say something. No, I just want to, I just feel that because that word was so powerful today, that if there's anybody that needs to come up and pray, I think we need to open the altar for prayer. The Amen. people who really realize what they have in Jesus, what that really means. Because I know if we're walking with the Lord a short time or long time, just the impact of that name. Uh, so if you'd like to come up and and your need for prayer you feel like you need prayer in this that we can we're here we're available for you to pray Amen. okay All thank right. you thank you brother eric
Lord God, before we close our service, we want to lift up our team, Pastor Don, Sister Marva, and Yadira, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you protect them, guide them, do what you do. <laughs> Cover them, Lord God, because you said you are our covering, you are our protector. Lord, I thank you that Pastor Don just has a desire to tell everybody 
that Jesus is the answer for your situation. Jesus is all powerful. As he's ministering, when he says, come see a man, <laughs> he is saying, come see this man that I know that I would like for you to get to know. I thank you, Lord, for who they are. And again, I just pray that they have an uneventful travel back because I know how tedious that is. So I pray for strength for them. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Now I think we're time to go. Thank you, Brother Eric. So, 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 so appropriate. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Lord. So I guess we'll stand up and be dismissed. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> There's always somebody to help me out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so what we like to do in the in the congregation is we'd like to bless each other by turning to each other and do that bless somebody because you'll be blessed too so and say it with me and I have it here <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and the Lord be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord give you peace. Amen.